Hello, hello everyone. Uh, glad to be glad to be here on this stage. This is the uh, fi finally, yes, finally I got to this stage. I already was on a couple of years ago in the gallery and the seminar room, and finally made it to this big stage. Uh, so welcome. And so first thing, what uh, I would like to tell is who am I? I'm my Maybe you, can, you should listen to me. <laughs> so I'm a software engineer at SUSE. Currently, I'm working on a SUSE manager or in a, in a community version known as Uni, and also on Iguana, which I will be talking about today. Uh, if you want to reach me, you can use either my email at SUSE or my GitHub account, which is a little more difficult to, to pronounce, but at least it's unique. Uh, so, let me start with some basic questions, like why, why Iguana? Why this even was created? Why we uh, come with, uh, with this system? It all begins last year on this conference, where we were full of enthusiasm about ALP and all of the things related to it and all the possibilities, what can it uh, bring to it. So we did a little brainstorming about the, about the about the problems we are facing and how we maybe, should, uh, maybe solve it. So we looked at the, at the time on the installing the system, not installing the system, because there was a lot of uncertainty, you know, install it using the old way RPMs, you install it with the images or whatever new version. And the, our goal on the top layer was to install an operating system which should, will be universally used for whatever reasons. So the mind, our goal was to fulfill some requirements of some undisclosed generic universal system. Then uh, we had another problem to solve, and this is that we have different hardware types. We have different archi CPU architectures, and even on the one architecture we have different uh, um, appliances or different uh, interfaces to bring up, bring on. So this is another thing which some generic so, uh, installer needs to be able to solve. Furthermore, we had a deployment problem. Uh, as I was telling before, you can install using the packages, you can install by deploying the uh, images uh, or whatever another reason. And the last thing, is uh, some kind of the installer security of itself uh, to being able to update the installer, how we, pro how we add security patches to the installer. And all of this is, of course, fulfilled also by uh, Yast installer, the well-known Yast installer, who can all of this do, do this. But there was one problem with it. Um, and this is that uh, when you needed some change in there, that was also a big uh, round trip. It was going through to one, t one team. You had to open back report, wait for something. Uh, basically, the, the cycle was quite long, and you also wanted to shorter this. So we came up with, uh, with Iguana. So what, what is it, actually? What, what is it, and, and why the hell it is called Iguana? <laughs> so the last question is easy, Iguana, because it's a lizard. And fun fact, Iguana, I proposed Iguana first to be a D installer, but D installer guys were too so slow to decide, so I took Iguana for, for my project, and now D installer is Agama. So I got the, y, I got the I in the <laughs> instead of installer. So Iguana, in the like, concrete sense or the, or the physical implementation is uh, in Itari or in Trump FS. I know that in Itari and in Itari FS are technically not the same thing, but I am using it interchangeably here. So it is uh, in Itari or in, uh, in Trump FS, with, together with tight kernel, of course. But it also is some kind of container execution environment. Why containers? Well, first of all, it's a good buzzword. <laughs> And second of all, uh, in Iguana, I am using I am using con containers in, in the in the sense, but they weren't meant to be used. Now, when the con containers were in, introduced, it was like isolation and security, some some level of security and so on, and it was not to be used as a distribution method. 
but there is also a whole infrastructure about it to be able to distribute the containers, of course. Uh, being an in Itadi, an installer in Itadi, I can't do an isolation in the containers. So the container has full access to everything. So there is no isolation, nothing. But I am using the distribution part. So I am distributing all the software using containers to be able to, do, to run it in this, uh, in this in Itadi. And with this uh, uh, with Iguana, I am configuring this uh, runtime in such a way so I can, I can uh, do this. And the last part, what Iguana is, is also some kind of contract or some kind of protocol or interface between the container and uh, the, in the in ID and what we expect from it. Because at the end, our result is to have installed and configured system. So of course, the containers need to prepare it somehow, uh, install the system, and prepare it in such a way that Iguana then understands it and can boot it and continue booting and, and so on. So how we did it, how we implemented it, and uh, what, what is the current state of implementation. So Iguana is made of a couple of different components. Um, first, we have a Dracut module. Then we have something which understands some uh, description how the con what container should be downloaded and how it should be used. And, and the last thing, we have the actual installation containers. If you look at the Dracut module, uh, who every touch Dracut, you know that Dracut has different hooks. So Iguana is basically a, uh, is a, a pre mount hook. Everything is running uh, just before mounting a, a, root, a root file system and switching over to it. Um, so, the, uh, but the Dracut module is not only the script, but also uh, and a setup setup script which gathers all the requirements and all the all the de dependencies and sort of it. So, Iguana takes uh, dependencies, so we are able to run containers in it. It's um, to ease the development. Currently, it's using a Podman. That means it pulls Podman into the initRD, which is making the initRD quite heavy because. Podman is 40 megabytes, so immediately we are 40 megabytes more in the in uh, I have some um, development uh, branches where I am running run C instead of this because run C is like megabyte or something like that, and Scopio where, for images where Scopio is like 30, no, 20 megabytes something like that, but it's not yet matched. It's maybe a plan for the future. Uh, this is uh, the part with uh, gathering the required dependencies, and the actual execution during the Dracut is preparing all the environments. Uh, there are some specifics when you are running containers in initRD, initRFS. Kernel knows that you are running initRFS, initRFS, and this allows you doing some things. For example, you can't use pivot root. Which is used by default. You have to use switch rule for uh, for the container, so you need to disable it. There is some uh, using for overlay FS, uh, overlay driver for um, for containers, and, and some a bunch of other things which we need to configure. So we are able to run containers there, and then it passes the con ex uh, config execution to this execution module, which uh, executes the workflow. It will talk about it later. And the last thing is to understand the results of the installation, um, to see how it um, was, uh, what was installed or where it was installed, whether it can continue booting, whether it can, uh, it, it, you need to do chi exec and so on. Uh, because in this case, uh, you can, you, Initad is running with some kernel version. You can install product with some completely different pro version. So you can't just switch root and continue. You need to detect if it's if you need to switch kaiexec, or in case, for example, full disk encryption where I, when we just reboot because we don't have passwords and we don't have uh, it's uh, so for safe reasons we just reboot the system and uh, you continue from from that and. Uh, 
it also uh, if there are some containers which do, are not completely adapted, it can also detect root files, uh, root, what is the root. It is using the UIDs specified by systemd people about the well-known partition types. So it has some code, so we detect what is the root and switch over to it and so on, if it's not provided by the uh, container. OK, so that was a record module. Now we, about the workflow. Uh, so workflow, it's a smallish Rust binary, uh, which uh, understands some YAML files, basically, and executes the containers of what's uh, described in these YAML files. It pools, and uh, in the future, to validate the images uh, using uh, you know, a cosine and something like that, to, that, it's, um, that they are not, uh, that they are, uh, not tampered with. Uh, and it does it for services and jobs. Uh, this is um, so when, when you, if you have uh, some installation job which is uh, which requires some more routines to run or some other containers to run at the same time. The, so uh, the difference between them, we have a job container which is the main thing which we are tracking, and some service containers which are in the back end uh, doing some service jobs. Um, this uh, execution is uh, all controlled by the YAML file, by the control file, I will show uh, in a moment. And the last thing it does is the cleanup. Um, this is because we are in uh, memo, we are run everything is running in a memory. So it's, uh, if you have some big containers, it's, it, take, it can take quite a big RAM. So mm, we need to be careful with it. And uh, with the Iguana, you can have multiple jobs. For example, one job will do the partitioning. Second job, that means second container, will do the installing or deploying the image. Third job, third container can do some modifications of our installed system. It's up to you. So after each of these job, there is a cleanup which removes the downloaded image. And, uh, and uh, basically, that's it. How it looks like? I don't know if you can see it, but there is usually something like name and description you can have. And then you have jobs. Uh, this is inspired, loosely inspired by how uh, GitHub workflows look like. There you have jobs as well, but this is, but I need to modify it so it's not 100% same. Then you have name of the job, the container, and the uh, registry or the image which should, uh, it should download. And uh, you can have some volumes uh, and uh, some budget, other things, environmental variables set up here and, uh, as well. Um, what you don't have here is any actual command to execute it. Uh, I prepared then, but never implemented it, uh, some uh, option to run a command. But I am not completely sure if it's a good idea, uh, because this is uh, yeah, file which is you know, usually uh, you can download it from or you can provide a URL to a GitHub or somewhere and it, uh, Iguana will execute it. I was not sure uh, if someone will, uh, because modifying just one file is e easier than uh, intercepting a container and so on. So, uh, so far it's not implemented. So, uh, you need to take care that if you are using container somewhere, uh, the entry point, or, the, or this, there has to be a default command which is executed. You can uh, and do the job. Uh, if you look at the Agama, which is capable, uh, which is able to run on the on top of Iguana, there is a special in the entry point file. Uh, there is a detection that we are in Iguana, and if we are Iguana, it automatically starts in daemon mode and wait for the daemon to finish and so on. Um, and of course, the volumes we have. This is this uh, thing is actually working example how uh, Igua, how Agama is started, and what it needs uh, to be, uh, how it should be presented. Uh, here is the service containers. Uh, it downloads it and exit starts the, uh, starts them before it starts the main container. So these are running. Uh, this is something you need to take care of. You keep in mind, of course, 
uh, because uh, if service containers need something from main container, then you need to switch them up to be incorrect. Uh, so there are not uh, some uh, failures because of dependencies. And uh, yes, basically, that's the, uh, that's the YAML file. And the last thing, which is, which is doing the, exit, the actual job, uh, are the installation containers bundles. Uh, this is my, my made up word, or made up name. <laughs> uh, the installation container bundle is basically a combination of the container and the Iguana workflow file. The workflow file we, s we saw before, and installation container. Now, why am I calling it installation container? It's because it's, uh, there are some assumptions or expectations in uh, indifference to normal container. Uh, sure, it's normal OCI or Docker container because it's running Podman, so Podman can run, run them. Uh, you probably expect that there should be some application or something which is doing the job. Uh, but you, every installation container is running in privileged mode. Uh, with host networking. So that means the host uh, networking is not namespaced, networking is the correct, uh, and privileged, so you have access to hardware, you can load kernel modules and whatever. So, and uh, you get the volumes uh, and demands from what you specify in the workflow, uh, workflow file, and all of these uh, containers have a Iguana uh, volume, uh, Iguana shared volume. This is shared between across all of these containers. So if you need to talk between containers, uh, you can either, you can, in case of Iguana, they have a debug socket which is inside this, this file. Uh, no, it, not in this file, but it's in, uh, in the different volume, that's true. But you can uh, add it into this, into this directory and communicate across the containers. And, uh, you can count on it that it will be there. And once the container's uh, finished, only the job container, the, the main job, our Iguana will automatically stop all the service containers. You don't have to uh, care of it. And when the last job of the workflow file finished, Iguana uh, kind of expects that there is a mount list here unless you use the detection of the root file system uh, by the UID. In the mount list, you specify the device, the mount point, if you, want, if you have more, if you need more, and the uh, mount options. And Iguana in ITAD will then mount it and continue with it based, based on this. There must be, uh, if, it's, if it's used, this file, uh, slash sysroot, which is the new root to what will, what will switch. Uh, this is the, what is the difference between normal container and an installation container, because installation container needs to, de needs to do this. Okay, and so how do I, how do I actually can use it? That's a good question. There are, uh, first, where I can get it. So uh, the source code is in a GitHub, in an OpenSUSE Iguana uh, repository, and the packages, uh, are available in the Just Head Iguana uh, project on the OBS. And in this uh, OBS repository, you will see three packages. One is named Iguana. This is when you don't want don't, uh, to use Iguana in some bigger project, but you want to use Iguana in standalone. It will install uh, two files into user share Iguana. And it will install kernel and uh, in it from in tadi in interface. Uh, then do you can use these files in uh, either Pixie or direct kernel boot or whatever other option if is there. And you the only thing you need to provide are the is the uh, kernel command line for the iguana. Iguana is using prefix rd.iguana. Uh, for now, we have uh, control URL and uh, containers, debug, and so on. So co here in the example, you can see how you can start uh, Agama 
from just, uh, just using this. So if you take those two files from here and put this to the uh, kernel command line, you start the machine, it will start the uh, Agama installer. One drawback, Agama uh, containers do not have a graphical interface yet. So if you use Agama ISO, Live ISO, then you will get the Firefox window and so on. If you use containers through uh, Iguana, this is only for remote, remote installation so far, because yeah, we don't have yet the container needed. I'm working on it. <laughs> and once the container uh, finishes, uh, it will automatically, oh, sorry. Yeah, and you just boot the machine and you start the Iguana, yeah. Uh, and the second option, how you can use it, is to install Iguana Dracut, or maybe Dracut Iguana, I am not, not sure <laughs> if it's correct, and Iguana workflow packages. Uh, Iguana Dracut contains the Dracut module, but it's not uh, inserted automatically if you rebuild your init RD, so you don't break your system. You need to manually add it uh, if you are building your new init RD, so you need to use add uh, Iguana in a Dracut command line. And the Iguana workflow is the, the Rust package for, for the workflow for parsing. If uh, the workflow file is missing, uh, the Dracut will report an error and will not install Iguana. Uh, Iguana also pulls network manager and associated modules for it. Uh, that means Dbus and Dbus uh, daemon. So keep that in mind that it will open a new, new things here. And then the, you continue the same. You either use Pixie with the new, new init RD, you used uh, the control file, and, and so on. And uh, if you run into the problem, in, a debug, in the, something, and you want to see what's happening, we have a special uh, RD Iguana debug. This will not enable debug on uh, Jakut side, it will enable only on Iguana. That means Iguana will start logging uh, with uh, everything which is done, which is doing. And also, it enables second console, so you can switch to another TTI. And it will not remove the containers once they are finished running. So if you have problems that some container is, yeah, uh, is not behaving as you, uh, as you want, and it's crashing or something like that, uh, it will, in debug mode, it will dr uh, drop to an emergency shell, or you can use the second console and inspect logs, inspect the containers, what's happening, and, and so on. Then, of course, you can use RD debug, which enables the debug logging for a whole jacket, but uh, at the same time, the RD debug does not enable Iguana debug. This is made so because sometimes you want to see what's happening, but you want Iguana to clear up, clean up the containers. So that's why it's two different things. And the last thing, the Iguana containers, is if you don't want to use a, a workflow file, you can specify the, the path to the, to the image, to, onto the registry, just in the command line option, and, and uh, try one on, for example, like BusyBox and so on. Uh, the thing is that when the Iguana starts the job, uh, job container, it is automatically attached as an interactive container. So if you start uh, uh, with the most container, you, you can uh, write to it and it will just, you will jump, uh, jump to this container. And basically that is how you use it and how do you work on it. Do you have any questions? There are no questions. I have a question. <laughs> uh, one of the questions is what are the drawbacks from this? Uh, from this? So uh, there is a problem with the memory consumption you need to take care of. Because uh, in, uh, for example, if you look at the SLE minimal requirements, it's like 512 megabytes or one gigabyte of RAM. With Iguana and Agama, you can't install it. It will crash. Uh, so two gigabytes is uh, currently the minimum, and that is not including the graphical interface. Of course, there are the options how we can uh, you know, work on the Agama containers, for example, or some other containers, 
but uh, uh, still something to take care. So if you will have some installation container which will have like five gigabytes, then of course uh, this is all in memory, so you need to take care of it. And another one is uh, yet yeah, that there is no not uh, not any validation so far. So um, no validation of the containers and uh, the. Even if you provide HTTPS for the containers, currently there is no certificate inside. So currently it's downloading the, uh, uh, the workflow file, ignoring the certificate. So not ide ideal, but this is just a demo. And um, the last, maybe drawback, and this is a call for action, is that uh, Iguana is as powerful as installation containers are. Currently we have two. We have Agama and then we have Saltboot, which is sync for Uni. But it may, it may be not enough. So if anyone is interested, try it, wants to have their own installer method, uh, then uh, I'm, uh, feel free to, to either talk to me or con get contact in, uh, in uh, uh, GitHub here. Uh, there is no mailing list. Uh, there, are, there are discussions in uh, GitHub uh, repo uh, enabled because reasons. Uh, yes, probably my uh, midlife, midlife crisis. I don't like all things anymore, so I don't like ma mailing lists anymore. So <laughs> that's why the uh, discussions on GitHub. Okay. Yes, there is one question. Yes, good question. Uh, I just repeat it, if it's possible to do an offline installation. It's planned, but it's not yet. Uh, you can uh, add the uh, Iguama to um, Kiwi, but uh, you need to uh, manually build the, the initari somehow. I, I'm not sure how I can force it in Kiwi. So uh, the installing would be, fi would be fine to 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 have it on ISO, but uh, we still need to support uh, co uh, copy it, um, you know, or use the locally uh, copied uh, images, which is not yet done. So yeah, there is a plan to have it, of course. So air gapped installations should be uh, should be possible once this is released, but so far only online install. Is another question? Did I understand correctly that you mentioned the keyword KXEC earlier? So is it possible yeah. as part of a workflow to um, boot into a different kernel and still maintain the, the workflow history? Yes. Uh, in uh, in uh, one file I did mention is um, when, you, when you install, when the container finishes, it can also have a file kernel exec, a kernel action. And in there, you can specify what you want to do after the installation is finished. And you can choose between kexec, which is also trying by default, if the kernel version is mismatch, or reboot, or, mm, or reboot. These are the only two options. So OK, but, but only at the end and not in the middle of an Agama process with modules? At the end of the workflow, yes. Okay. Exactly. There is also one thing that, uh, for example, when you try to build an uh, image from the BCI containers, they do not have KXEC uh, inside. And you can't even uh, derive from it, you can't install it for some reason. At least it wasn't available last time I checked. So uh, KXEC is done after workflow. It's KXEC binary is part of the uh, Iguana. So Iguana is loading the new kernel. Uh, and is also um, uh, doing the CAIX exam uh, at, uh, at itself. Uh, do you plan to have um, configurable URLs for container images? Imagine you have um, a user having its own local registry and, and they want to use this one instead of the official one. Um, not yet. I was thinking about to have uh, configurable uh, workflow file. I mean, if you have your own repos if you have your own registry, you will provide your own workflow file when you have link to the correct registry. Okay. 
Any other question? No, here is in the front. So why there is a uh, graphical interface? Yeah. <laughs> uh, because not so far no one did it. <laughs> just, uh, could you, the same way you are uh, starting a graphical interface with the Leaf installer, it could be possible to add the Firefox and that stuff on the yeah. installer? Yeah, I'm not saying it's not possible, but we yeah. need to have in a container. And I yeah. know that there is a, like GDM container or something, uh, what, uh, uh, hmm. already present, but um, the last time I t tried it, they were quite heavy to run, and I was also uh, working a little bit little more about just using like some minimal uh, valent uh, things like uh, Sway or something like that, hmm. and have in one container and then have uh, Firefox in another and just interact with them. Hmm. But I need to finish this job first. Yeah. It's not yet ready. But I plan to that eventually we will get there. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay, any other question? I guess not then. We are just one minute past, so I guess that's fine. So thank you very much. <laughs>